We have been working on, um, we're looking at both biology and the robotics at the same time because we want to know how nature works and we want to know how to improve robotics at the same time. The way how we do it is observe nature first and how animals move and work and then extract the principles so that we can actually improve technology based on what we learn from nature. We, we look at the various animals from very small animals like ants and spiders and all the way up to human and, and, and dinosaurs if you're interested. And uh, what we are trying to understand is um, uh, mostly uh, locomotion capability of animals because that really makes difference between machines and animals. So one of the main challenges in robotics locomotion research is that how to improve energy efficiency of uh, motor control because uh, we know that uh, robots require about 10 to 100 times more energy compared to animals doing the same thing. So we have to think about different aspects of robots to uh, understand how to improve energy efficiency by a factor of 10 to 100. So hopping is a very interesting problem because it's not continuous motion like wheels rolling on the ground. So hopping has a very discrete action. You have a contact phase and, and, and flight phase, and that makes the dynamics very, very difficult from an engineering point of view. But on the other hand, if you look at nature, we discrete contact is everywhere. We walk every day without any effort. And what's the, what's the um, why can we do it so easily? And that's what we want to explore in our investigation. One of the uh, applications that we develop in our research is what we call chairless chair, uh, the device that you can wear uh, for um, sitting um, whatever you want. So that's a device you can wear just like your trouser uh, walking around normally, but if you switch on the device, you can actually block your knee joint so that you can sit in whatever posture you want. And that's, um, that's, what we, that's one of the applications we developed develop so far in our laboratory. I, I don't think it's so easy to make a robot similar to ourselves, like you know, you know, capable like ourselves. Uh, it's still a long way to go. Probably it's like 50 year, 100 year uh, research perspective is probably required. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, we have a lot of enabling technologies available here and there. Actuator is one thing, sensor is another thing, and we have a lot of uh, embedded computing systems. So that will help us really uh, enhancing um, some aspects of, um, of biology uh, copy to the engineering world. So that's, uh, that's what I see the future. So uh, we're not going to see human-like robots very soon, but uh, we have a lot of intelligent machines that can uh, at least cover some uh, functionality that we as humans or animals do.